Hello my soccer universe, everything's a little bit late today. I'm actually shooting this <laughs> in the when the light is out, so I don't have really the light up there, but maybe let's turn it off. We'll give some better view overall. Yeah, um we're summarizing what happened in Austria and in Germany this uh weekend. And I actually I will start in Austria because we had a midweek round as well. Where um, after the two rounds, it has to be said, uh, those two rounds gave us a big way of showing how things might turn out, at least after the regular season and maybe even moving forward into the uh, championship round. Lask has no problem with Wolfsburg, but Lask still has a pretty big rapid problem uh, that we will get into as well. Um, in Germany, I think the big news there is that we have a completely new and unexpected top four. And in this top three we have with Wolfsburg and Frankfurt, oh, top four, uh, Wolfsburg and Frankfurt, two teams that no one really expected to be there uh, not too long ago. We also had a big win for Köln, that's why I'm wearing Köln, in the relegation battle. While uh, both Bayern and Dortmund, the nominally best teams, keep easy wins. Bayern, of course, totally expected. Um, Dortmund needed to get back on track. Uh, while Leverkusen and Gladbach are tripping up a little bit. I would say let's go into it. We'll look at the midweek round in Austria where um, I think the first notable result was uh, Rapid's 2-1 win over St. Pölten. was notable because the winning goal by Kara was uh, kind of amazing. Uh, we, with him putting his uh, leg high up, it's like a ballet dancer. If you haven't seen it, try to look, look, look it up. It's actually one worth watching. One that I was not too happy with to begin with and also a little bit of uh, disgrace for Rapid because right on Tuesday when the game was supposed to be played, they couldn't get rid of the snow and uh, I don't quite understand that because they have uh, a heat heating under the playing surface, but you know, whatever. Uh, Tirol and Salzburg getting easy wins also at the same time and then everything was uh, kind of with a big battle between Wolfsburg and Lusk uh, seeing who will uh, stay actually a little bit in uh, you know it was a make or break game because if Lusk would, would have lost they would have lost touch with the uh, top three if Wolfsburg would lose it would mean they're in uh, danger of missing out of the champions um, playoff so yeah uh, it was an important game for both teams and it was a very um, you know uh, aggressive, intense game, especially in the first half, but uh, with Lusk clearly having the advantage, not having big chances, but it was more always going towards Wal Wal Wolfsburg, when Wolfsburg, uh, Wolfsburg was um, attacking. Uh, it was rather, rather team. So it had clear advantages for Lusk, but not clear chances. But the breakthrough came in the second half, when after, you know, the one time the Wolfsburg comes forward to really want to score, uh, Trauna first steadies him, he himself had a little bit of luck uh, with defending and then a nice quarterback pass into Gruber in the 50th to make it 1-0, um, great goal and how he rounds everyone and uh, goal, goal goes in and then uh, in the 60th uh, a throw in that bounces three times, Eggestein finally controls it, gets it to Gruber, 2-0 game done and dusted and then uh, James Holland 79th adds a third one. So that put me quite positive for the weekend uh, where I think the other uh, notable result was the one between Austria Wien and Tirol. Uh, that was almost a must win for Austria Wien if they wanted to go into the ch ch championship round. They didn't get it. Uh, they had the lead at the half uh, early on, but then Tirol turned, turned around, uh, took the lead in the 85th actually, but then the right after Austria can equalize. It ends 2-2, which is basically a, more a win for Tirol than for Austria. We also had a, a surprising result with Alltag beating Sturm Graz. That came un un unexpected, a little bit help, uh, at least for Lusk. And then Wolfsburg, a big win over St. Pölten, uh, which actually will put them a little bit in a more favorable spot moving forward into the championship round. And then I think it was all down to Lusk Rapid, a, a team that Lusk has not beaten now in four games in a row. And again, they had our number. Um, the first half was really ping pong ping pong was going back and forth and um yes it had advantages rapid for at least 30 35 minutes 
uh, they repeat, whenever they had a dead ball situation, they caused less trouble. They probably should have scored early on, but it was a great save by Schlager. Where, I don't, I, I don't know why, I mean, uh, dead ball situations are strength of loss, but uh, defending them, uh, they're absolutely horrible, and Rapid really played this well. Um, and the first goal came kind of a little bit from a dead ball situation, but, but you know, you had already a ball, you lose, lose it again, and then Grava takes a shot, it's uh, deflected into the net. I honestly think you should count as an own goal. However, two minutes later, very sim similar goal. Again, um, it came from from the side, the ball comes to James James Holland, where the shot also gets deflected, uh, and it's 1-1 in 20 21st, and then they hit us again from a free a free get the Grava plays, and Knaz Müller can pull it in in 23rd. That was the game because uh, then Rapid held back, last guilt going and I have to say, I mean Rapid hit the post I have to say early in the first, in the second half, but from that moment on the last had many chances and they were, um, you know, threatening the score but never quite could and it ends with another crushing defeat to Rapid, which personally this is the game that I want to win most and they, they are not keeping winning and uh, it the everything out of me this can happen so because now in the table I still think that Lusk is a better team than Rapid overall however Rapid has our number and Rapid is hanging in there now with Sal Salzburg a point point ban and, and you can see they're even in the championship race now over overtaking Lusk although well, this doesn't mean much because Salzburg will become the new champions um, but yeah there is now a distance. We have uh, top two, we have then the next two, and then uh, Tyrol looks, despite the low rating, still rather good for the playoff. And then Wolfsburg is uh, rather safe there as well. Austria Wien still not very, uh, is now sniffing a little bit, but they cannot get closer. I actually think if they get a run, they might egg, 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 go in there, but probably more at the expense of Wolfsburg than Tyrol. At least that's how it looks at the moment. Um, now, when I said there is now a clear distance, if we are just now for uh, the standings in the playoffs, you see it's actually not that big of a distance because points are halved, so everything scooches a lot more together. Uh, just the standings remain the same uh, because everyone has played the same games, but I want to look at this difference bar and, you know, worryingly, Lusk is now a little bit behind their own expectations, uh, which actually matches a little bit my impressions as well that... Um, I'm not calling crisis yet, but they didn't come out well out of the winter break and uh, switching stadiums maybe also did not help. The pitch is a lot smaller. I don't want to blame that, but uh, there is a clear tendency because last season when we played all, all in the smaller stadium, we were away from home, we were excellent and at home we were not so good. And now in uh, the fall, it was the other way around and now it seems to turn again, but you know, small sample sizes yet. Um, expected final regular season standings, you see it all lines up nicely and it's not even a question whether Austria Wien will get in there or not because the potential will not, but whether with Tirol or Wolfsburg will, they are the ones that are close. Lask also ahead of Sturm, it is really, really, really nice um, with that. However, for the champions uh, uh, ship, Salzburg is clearly favorite, but you see here Rapid and Lask are much closer together. Lask still has the better rating, uh, but uh, and Admira looks to be done. So yeah, a lot about Austria. We have in the on the weekend we have the Austrian Cup, with uh, you know the big one is probably Salzburg against Austria, and that, that will not be a big one. Everything else are rather easy ties. I would expect Wolfsburg, Sturm, Salzburg, and Lask to progress, and then next round is then a Tuesday after, where again Austria uh, has to play at Salz Salz Salzburg, so probably can stay there. Rapid against Wolfsburg is a big name matchup there as well. Um, maybe they can trip up. Let's see. Lask has to play at St. Pölten. Let's go in the Bundesliga, where it started on Friday with uh, Stuttgart in rainbow uh, jerseys, which I found very interesting. Not necessarily that I want to have them, but I found them, uh, it was refreshing that they took their design and made it in rainbows. Got in the end, uh, two nil win over Mainz, but it was a lot more hard work. Kalajic and Ivan getting the goals. Um, Bayern, easy 4-1 win, uh, win over Hoffenheim, having a little bit trouble beginning, but then uh, getting on in uh, Lewandowski and continuing his goal scoring form. Dortmund also a uh, deserved win, although being behind and with Holland missing a penalty. 3 1 over Augsburg. We have to talk about other games. Frankfurt 
is becoming, uh, they are getting now the wins. They have barely lost this season so far, but now they're getting, getting into the wins as well. However, um, they had better of the game, but it was Piontek that gave Hertha the lead, but right after Silva equalizes 1-1, uh, and uh, in the 80, 85th, Hinteregger heads it in to make it 2-1, uh, and Silva then with a penalty uh, in the, uh, makes it 3-1 uh, in stoppage time. I uh, have to also say that uh, the coach for Hertha got fired last weekend and now new new coach and Hertha still very much in trouble. The other Berlin team keep their lofty uh, stand standing, although Gladbach I think was overall the better team. With the first shot on goal, Knoche gets actually the uh, lead for uh, Union. Player can equalize and then lay it on. There was claims for a penalty, but it was never. I think it was all right to not give it. So it ends 1-1 in a top duel, but 1-1 uh, that will not serve either one go, uh, going forward, I have to say. Schalke and had a 1-1 one, one lead, but was unlucky to hang on to it. Leipzig against Leverkusen was also a game that largely was dominated by Leipzig, I have to, have, have to say, although Leverkusen had two uh, big chances, especially late on, probably should have equalized, but it would not have been fair, because Nk uh, after Nkunku gave Leipzig the lead, they hit the post through Serloth and then very late on to Sabitzer as well. So I think Le Leipzig uh, is the uh, deserved winner. Köln can win at home in Away jerseys. I think that was the trick, and that's why I'm also wearing the away jersey and not the uh, car carnival jersey. With a Wolf, who uh, never, who at most scored one goal, scoring two in the tenth and the twenty-eighth, give them a two-nil lead at the half. Bielefeld then starting to knock, but just at the moment when Bielefeld was coming to maybe get a goal, they had a goal. I think they this loud even and Rekbejai makes it three-nil, and and that ends the game right there because uh, they only can pull one back through Cordova but a uh, very important win for Köln easing the nerves just a teeny little bit I gotta say and then Wolfsburg uh, it was a much tighter game than the final scoreline Brooks and Weichhorst Brooks with the first chance of the game and then Weichhorst with a typical Weichhorst goal uh, nice assist by Steffen and he basically directly pulls it in, in, into the net. But then Freiburg in the second half really came, really put Wolfsburg into, into trouble and only when it was the goal by Gerhard was scored, then I think you had the feeling, yeah, now Wolfsburg is safe. But this was a much more even game than the final scoreline would suggest. So uh, with that in the final standings, we have a lot of movement behind Bayern and Leipzig, who seem to be one and two for this season. I think uh, we don't need to um, suspect anything else there. But then suddenly Wolfsburg and Frankfurt moving in three and four because Leverkusen uh, is dropping down, Klappers dropping down, Union was already in eighth, is now losing a little bit uh, touch with those top spots. Um, Dortmund moving a little bit up, but let's see. Also a lot of movements uh, in mid midfield to bottom, with especially Köln moving up in 14th, but it's not a very, very safe place. But for, you, you're gonna see the Mainz and Schalke, they are more or less out of it. It's seven points to uh, get to safety. Um, if we look at the expected final, sta final standings, Leipzig now clearly in second spot again. Uh, Dortmund and Wolfsburg are the two now favored over Leverkusen to go into the Champions League. And I think Wolfsburg would be a surprise. Gladbach, Eintracht, Union probably for the Europa League spots, you know, there's the cup uh, also. So maybe the seventh spot could be a Europa League or Europa Conference League spot. Uh, we'll see about that and a broad midfield. I think relegation. Oh, it is tough. I mean, uh, the bottom two seem to be fixed. Bielefeld and Köln for the relegation spot. And it's I'm curious whether Werder, Augsburg and Hertha can be dragged into it. In Germany, we also have the cup, but we have it already midweek. Uh, I said it before, there's not really the big match. I think Stuttgart, Gladbach, uh, but it sounded way more in interesting a uh, few rounds ago. And everything else is pretty clear. And then um, on the weekend round, we have a derby between Gladbach and Köln, which is never ends well. Hertha Bayern seems like seems like a big name matchup. No, I'm also looking at Leverkusen, Stuttgart, Freiburg, Dortmund as potential uh, interesting games. But you know, it's it's a so and so round. Hoffenheim, Frankfurt, maybe Frankfurt can back it up. That was it for me from the German-speaking leagues. Uh, 
add something if you want to do so in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.